your heart races, nailing headshots. Your gaming PC is your ultimate weapon. But are you getting the most out of it? Imagine soaring through virtual worlds with lightning fast speeds and seamless graphics. This isn't just a gamer's dream, it's within your reach. In this video, we'll show you how to unlock your PC's full potential and maximize your frames per second. From optimizing your settings to upgrading your hardware, We'll cover everything you need to know to dominate your games. Get ready to elevate your gaming experience to new heights and leave your competitors in the dust. FPS or frames per second is routinely used to measure a game's performance. A basic ruling is the higher the better. But Drew, if a higher FPS is meant to be the holy grail, why does my Fortnite turn into a flippin' slideshow every time I turn into a new putting spree? Well, certain games and hardware limit the amount of frames being sent to your monitors. Picture this, you've got a water bottle with a tiny hole and you're on a mission to drain it faster than your thirst for victory. But here's the kicker, if that hole's no bigger than a pushpin, you're gonna be waiting longer than it takes for your squad to agree on a drop spot. It's like trying to empty a pool with a teaspoon instead of diving in cannonball style. Gotta pop that lid off for maximum flow, right? That's how your gaming rig is. It's also why it's called a bottleneck. The more powerful your GPU, CPU, and even RAM, the more frames you can push the more smooth your game is. The opposite is also true. The less powerful your components are, then less frames to get seen to your monitor. Since a lot of PC parts aren't exactly compatible, many who are compatible comes with some amount of bottleneck. The main components that impact gaming performance are the GPU, CPU, and RAM, and sometimes even your storage, depending on the game if it's installed on the SSD or a hard drive, along with your monitors and screen re resolution. To check this, it's a good practice to look at websites like this one from PC Builds with their bottleneck calculator, but you need to properly set it up. Since we're talking about gaming, we need to put that graphic graphics card intense task instead of general. General tasks are your typical web browsing, email checking, grandma, grandpa, Facebook scrolling, just like your CPU, graphics card, and screen resolution, and click the button and boom. You want to aim for about 5% or lower to get the best performance. Ready to optimize your digital arsenal without maxing out your credit points? Introducing CD Heat, your virtual vault for discounted gaming treasure. From FPS juggernauts to productivity power-ups, CD Keys has the bite-sized deals you crave. CD Keys offers digital codes for all the latest games at unbeatable price, and right now they're offering an exclusive discount to our viewers. Just use the link in the description or scan the QR code to save on the latest game. Now, let's get started with the video. Sure, to get the best performance, you can just simply buy a better graphics card, CPU, whatever. But there are simple and free ways that you can still take advantage of your current hardware. First is the topic of overclocking. This makes your GPU or CPU run a little bit faster and also use a little bit more power. If you know what you're doing, then this is a good route, but I would typically not recommend it for the beginner because there are risks in messing up your perfectly working component. Make it turn into a paperweight. Uh, making sure your device are up to date by and lowering the game settings can make a drastic difference especially if you never updated your, your drivers in your 10 year old build grandpa choosing the right monitor is also crucial to your performance if you know your parts can shoot out 200 frames per second but you don't see it then your monitor possibly can only refresh up to 60 times this is measured in hertz no not the car rental place typical gaming monitors are usually advertised around 125 to 250 hertz range even then you still have to manually change the hertz of your monitor with the display settings. Thanks for watching for a more informal video and please make sure to subscribe.